Hey everybody, it's Brad. And I'm Krista. With the Big Family Homestead, and today we're going to talk about milking your family milk cow, cows, or maybe three cows. Maybe cows. A few cows. Yep. What your choices are, what the positives and negatives are, and what we've chosen to do, and why. So, here we yeah. go. We have a family milk cow for, especially for our daughter, Grace. Um, she eats through G-tube, and so that raw milk is actually really beneficial to her. Uh, so that's why, again, why we have moved from goats to now a milk cow. Right, and um, we ended up starting out with one cow. Right, we had one small cow uh, in Ohio, and then when we moved up here, we got a larger jersey, um, and now we've moved in, we have two jerseys. Oh boy. Now a for a small farm, hobby farm, uh, or family milk cow, you have a couple options, and the two biggest ones, the two biggest ones are? Hand milking or surge milking. Okay, let's talk about hand, hand milking first. Hand milking, um, okay, so some pros of it's easy cleanup. Um, you build a really, you build pup eye arms is what I used to call them <laughs> because you had just hand strength that was crazy. However, it takes a lot of time to build up to that hand strength. And you um, have to milk that cow out. You have to milk that cow out every day, twice a day. Well, unless, what happens? Or the cow will get mastitis. You can milk once a day if you have a calf also on that cow. So, um, <laughs> the cow's scratching. Um, however, the con to hand milking is you have an open bucket underneath that cow that that cow can step in. Uh, de debris can fall off the cow if the cow has got hay or poo. Um, all of that could fall into the into the milk, and you could have bacteria in your milk. They could kick it over. They can kick it over, step in it. Oh, we have done it all. It, it's happened countless times. <laughs> what if you get? What's a flicker? What if you get a flicker? Oh my! And we have a flicker, a tail flicker. Uh, a cow that gets agitated. No, don't show that. <laughs> <laughs> a cow that gets agitated and she starts flicking her tail. With I, precision. Oh, exact precision. You don't think that they do it on purpose. Oh, but they do. Oh, yes, they do. We have one currently that is a tail flicker. She's going to have her tail trimmed, uh, the hair on the end, because there's hay and poo and pee stuck in those hairs. It is not a fun thing to have that flicked in your eye. Or in your milk. Or in your milk. Because then you got to get rid of it. <laughs> right. So we're going to trim her hairs uh, this week. Um, then we have one, ta one cow that doesn't flick her tail. She just stands perfectly still. And then there's a cow, you know, there's cows that have to eat while they're being milked. There's cows that don't eat when they're milked. It's just, it's a, it's a lovely Ah, circle. <laughs> so, but now for the pros. Well, we started yeah. pro the pros, but hold on with the pros. So just to recap a little bit with the pros on hand milking is it doesn't cost you anything. Doesn't cost a lot, no. It's your hands. Right, it's your hands and your bucket and that's pretty much it. Yep. Yeah. So if, if you have any muscle strength or you can build up muscle strength, mm -hmm. then that's easy. Now you got to think though that some cows just won't tolerate it. Right. They they have cows have personalities just like people have personalities. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I don't like it when people are messing with my teats. So <laughs> <laughs> Well, and you know, if you buy an older cow, say from a dairy, that cow is already used to being surge milked and they're not going to want to stand there for 20, 30 minutes to be hand milked. Takes longer. It takes longer to hand milk. Um Surge milking takes a lot less time, so. However, cleanup is the big deal. Cleanup so if you only have one cow or two cows, you're gonna spend more time cleaning up all your equipment than if you just milked by hand. Right, if, yeah, well. Yeah, tell the truth. It's actually, delusional. It, no, it, it actually does not take longer to clean up than it does to hand milk. Yes, it does. N have you cleaned it? Yes. No, you have not. Yes. No. Yes. No. Many times. No. Yes. We are going to agree to disagree. <laughs> okay? Agree to disagree. Okay. 
Well, then, then I'm just but, trying to be truthful. But it does take longer to um, it does take longer to hand milk um, than to clean up after hand milking. Okay, but it's whatever. Let's talk about the surge milker. The surge milker is a vacuum based. System. Uh, it's it's it sucks. <laughs> That's what it does, As it cuts. <laughs> and it pulsates. But Surge is actually a brand. It is so a brand. So let me show you what what it does. There's there's really three parts to it. You've got the vacuum. Then you've got your hoses. Well, that doesn't really count as a part. Then you get your can you've and got the pulsator. The yeah, the pulsator, the vacuum, and yeah, and let's well, the teacups. Let's we'll show them the vacuum first. Okay. okay. So basically, what you have here, like I said, Surge is a brand. You've got a vacuum pump that's basically, it's a pump. It creates a vacuum and then it uses these hoses to go to, we're gonna talk about the different kinds of um, actual canisters and teat cups. Chris is gonna talk about that, but that's the vacuum. It uses electricity to spin the pulley, the wheel, and creates a vacuum. Okay. Go ahead and turn it on, yeah, mama. Sure. And that's what it does. Okay, so here are two different kinds of milking machines that, that we have. This is uh, the surge milker here. The teat cups uh, come off of here and attach the vacuum hoses through here. This is the pulsator. Um, the milk goes into this can and is contained in here and keeps it clean and um, uh, dust-free or poo-free. Uh, this is another kind. This is a de Laval. Um, this one, this hangs under the cow instead of this whole thing. This and that. Right. This, yeah, this does both. Right, right. These tea cups would be on here. This would hang under the cow where this system, this is the only thing that hangs right, under so the Right, so this cow. sits on the side this sits with on this the system. Side. Exactly. This sits on the side. There's the vacuum hose that goes to there. Um, and then the milk hose goes into uh, this can. Now they both have pulsators, right? Which it regulates the amount of how the teats are actually squeezed, right? How how quickly and how fast the teats um, are squeezed and and sucked. Well, yeah, and so. you can regulate because <laughs> it's vacuum and pulsation, right? Exactly. Because if it's only vacuum, it will not work. Um, as a calf drinks on the teat. It has that sucking motion and release, suck and release. So um, the pulsators help to regulate that. And That's these, this on these here. little things go back and forth um, to help regulate that. Yep. And you can actually adjust the, the rate of speed at which it goes. Right. And it is recommended that the, the rate is 40 to 60 um, pulses per minute. Uh, and the reasons for that, I just found this out recently. It's very interesting. Uh, the calf sucks at 40 to 60 beats per minute, and the cow's heart beats 40 to 60 beats per minute. So this just helps to simulate that whole thing. You want to keep some really, relaxed. It keeps them relaxed. It's really interesting. Okay, so we have a cow that is in need of a milking. A milking. You want to yes. show the whole setup? Right. So we're going to use this setup? We'll use this setup because this is our current setup. We have moved away from the uh, bucket that hangs underneath the cow. Um, Why? Well, okay. The it's more convenient. Being, it is way more convenient to Hi, have kitty. this because I don't have to pick this bucket up as much. Um, this hanging under the cow, I have to hold it up there um, and hook up the teat cups where all I have to do is hold this under the cow and hook up the teat cups. It's, it's a lot easier um, on my joints. <laughs> right. And you get nothing. Kitty. Get out of here. Kitty. All right. So here's our cow, honey. She had been milked earlier this morning, but first things first, you got to clean her off real good, right? Right, but I'm going to turn the machine on to help to get the system pressurized. Cause okay. Because it it's, it's going to be really loud now. Right. All right, when you shove the cow, we have this, this new Olympic sport of shoving the cow to this side because she likes to sway to the other side. Come so we got to pull her over. Got to pull her over. Here, I'll give a hand. Scooch over, lady. Come on. There we go. That's a good girl. See, she's a flicker. There we go. 
Okay, so you first get her good and clean? Yep, yeah, you, you just get a nice hot soapy rag um, and clean the teats, just like so. And then dry them off. And this, and this motion actually helps to um, uh, simulate letdown because this is um, uh, pretending that this is the calf. So bumping, the, yeah. bumping the uh, the teats. So for those who don't know, the cow can actually have the ability to keep their milk in, just like you would if you had to go to the bathroom, like to pee. Right. You exactly. can hold it back. Right. Now, what I just did is I squeezed the teats um, just a couple of times to help get that bacteria out of the the plug there. Right here, this plug is not allowing any air or debris or anything. There's no air being sucked through these teat cups. So it keeps it really, this. it keeps the system closed. To do that, I need to flip this over and now I push this up, but it's still a closed system because this is blocking the air from going in. So to, to um, get the teat cup attached to the teat, I need to just lift one up at a time. You hear that? That's the, the air going through the system. And there goes the milk. And there's the milk. Yeah. Are you going? And that's how it works. Now, how long do you leave her on the machine? It, it takes between five and seven minutes, and I pay attention to that little clear glo globe at the bottom. Um, when I don't see any more milk or a lot of milk, you quit that. <laughs> when I don't see a lot of milk going through there, then it's time to take it off. Okay. We'll check back. She's holding her milk, her, her milk she's back. She's holding her milk back. You silly girl. All right, now time's up. As you can see, there's very little milk coming through there. Now, to take this off, I'm going to release the pressure by pulling this she down. She just flicked you. <laughs> I know she did. And now it's it the system clo stayed closed when so I pulled this up. It's not sucking poop in. It's not sucking any dirt, any poo, any hay, nothing, uh, or hair. So this is closed. And then all we do is hang this. Well, I pull I pull it up so all the milk goes in the can. And then put it on the hook and turn it off. And that's all. That's it. That's it. You got your milk in your can. Right, right. So now that we're completely finished, um, you can take this milk inside. I always, um, sorry, we always filter it uh, through a milk filter into a big container. I'm not going to show you that right here because we're in the barn. Our fridge is full our, too. And our fridge is full. So this milk actually will not be going to waste. Uh, we have pigs and chickens that are going to absolutely love this. So we take the lid off and pour this out. And then I'm gonna show you how, how I clean it just to keep the uh, parts free from milk. And by the way, that was that milk right there, that was not a full milking. We, we no. kind of waited to show you for this video. Right. So there'd be a lot more in a normal milking. Well, and she still has a calf on her. So yep. we, don't want to we don't want to take everything. We just want to help release um, any pressure that she may have. Okay, so. I'm going to close the system here so nothing is getting sucked through here and turn the vacuum pump back on. Now, I have a bucket of hot soapy water here and all I'm going to do is open the system. And, oh, and build up pressure here. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to make sure we're pressurized now. Um, and. I'm going to open this system now and dip it down into the bucket. And it's going to suck that hot water in through this tube to clean it out. And that's it. Okay, now what you would do next is the same thing, but with clean water, clean hot water, just to get all of that soap residue out of the tubes and out of the can. But easy cleanup. Easy cleanup. Now, we do a deep clean. We do a deep clean every night. Um, we take off all of these uh, and we wash everything. 
hot soapy water. So it's not, this is not a normal thing. We just do this um, in the morning so that milk is not sitting in this tube all afternoon. Okay, quick disclaimer. Um, if you know much about farmers, you will know this, that if you talk to a hundred farmers about any topic at all, they're all gonna have their opinion right. about it. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. But there's, there's this is the only one that's the right way to do it. Of course, of course. We're not saying that what we're doing is right for you. You have to see what works for you because we have hand milked, we have surge milked, and we have used this bucket system now. So, uh, no, it's not work. a punching bag. Um, so we have done several things. You just have to find what works for you guys. As we get older, um, I have arthritis in my hands already. So I, I can't hand milk uh, yeah. for more than you know five minutes before yeah. my hands seize up. So this system is working for us. If you're younger though and have no arthritis and no issues, go for it. Go for it. Try it out. Go for it. Um, because honestly, it's cheaper. It's cheaper and it's actually really rewarding. I loved hand milking. Yeah. Um, but I just I physically can't do it. But anymore. you also had a very willing participant. I at did the time. have I, at the time the goats were. Goats are super easy to milk compared to mm -hmm. a cow. Um, so if you want to start out with milking, start milking a goat mm -hmm. and that helps build your hand strength because there's not a lot of milk in those goats. You get maybe three quarters of a gallon to a gallon in one of the dairy goats, but in a Jersey cow, you can get at their peak three oh, to four wow. gallons at one time. Don't get me started with a whole steam. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. That's five. That's at least five. One time. One, t one milking. Yeah. No, one time. sorry. It's, ah. It's a lot. You better have a big family. <laughs> Take, tag team, your turn to milk. Right, or here, or here, each person gets one teat. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> I can just imagine. Speed teating. I have, I, Speed you know, teating. When, when we first moved here, before we had our surge milker stuff all set up, Hope and I did tag team milk. Her, one on one she side. sat on one side, I sat on the other side, so we were only milking out two teats. <laughs> yeah, but so. a whole steam, who? Anyway, oh, for goodness sakes, no. So figure out what works best for you. Right. This is what we're doing, and we figured you'd be uh, well. That it might be interesting to see mm -hmm. how the process goes right. together. Right. So, yes, we're done. Yeah, I think so. All right. I well, that's so. it. I'm Brad. I'm Krista. You guys have an amazing and blessed day.